Good evening. I wrap scene with your stock spider ETF video, and this is for Thursday, the 11th of April, 2024. Now, remember, you just got a few days left for taxes. I took care of mine today, finally, so got them out of the way, and uh, it's good to be done. All right. So, interesting day. You know, I, I wrote in my futures research this morning that the markets had gone down yesterday and today to the lower Bollinger Bands in the stock indices. And I thought a bounce from there, at least short covering would come in. In fact, I specifically said, I don't see new buying necessarily, but I definitely see short covering as should be the, the play of the day. And as it turns out, the markets rebounded nicely off those lows. One day doesn't make a trend. But what the market has done now is it has already discounted the hot CPI. It's had a softer set of PPI numbers today. That was very important. And the PPI and the CPI will go into the blender and on April 26th, we'll get the PCE index. Now, I don't expect that the Fed's gonna do anything, as you know, in June, July. I, I just don't see it. I see that September is the first possibility if and only if we get to the point where the data starts coming down. The fact that you had three months in a row of CPI going up is a trend. I mean, two points don't make a trend. Three points do. So now you have to get that reversal going. And I don't think the Fed needs to wait uh, to, to be for four or five. I think they can be comfortable if three come in, if they come in. Then they might also need to see what labor is doing. So we're not there. What we did see is what I said. In the European area, we saw that the European Central Bank is very much not promising a June cut. In fact, Ms. Lagarde said that over and over, but what she also said was, if the data stays as is, it looks likely. She also said that a number of members were pushing for that. So that's good. You came back today in Amazon going for new highs on the whole move. So that's pretty important right off the bat. NVIDIA came back $35. Apple came roaring off the lows finally and had one of its best gain days in recent times. That's a good. Microsoft added $4. All right. So when we come to IEO, you can see you've got a pattern of lower highs, lower lows on the chart. What is that? That's a downtrend in the market. What else? The market is over the 18-day average, so the bias is up. So this is a corrective move to the downside, not the start of something that should last. If it goes all the way down, it could get to the 18-day average, but a stall comes in the moment you get back over, not today's high, but yesterday's high, and yesterday's high in the market was 111.73. So if that were to be taken out, a new problem for the people that want to be bearish. Next resistance point, the 114 area. And because you have the embedded slow stochastic at work, this is just a correction in a market that I think wants to stay in the bull camp. When we look at DraftKings, now that you poke through the 1448 level, if the market's gonna have legs to the downside, it's gotta keep closing under the 18 day average and I don't even wanna see it over 4592. It started down, but when the market around it, everywhere you looked, you started seeing a rally coming back in the market. This rallied with the market. This could have been a head fake in the market, trying for the downside to get to the 4306 level. Be careful with that. I don't see anything bullish on it, but the bear may not be at work. In UGA, the gasoline fund, all I keep hearing is everybody's bullish gasoline and crude. This has got to be one of the most crowded trades that we've got now. That doesn't mean though that it won't work, but I always get nervous when everything I'm hearing is one side in the market. That either means that it's just a slam dunk and it's gonna go, or they're wrong. Now in futures, when everything gets going, and I can tell you from the futures, one-sided, you'll see the commitment of open interest and what's going on. Generally, they find a way to just reverse it on you. We'll see. I'm looking for the resistance in the market at 73.40. Again, this is a market that has lost its way in terms of momentum, it's overbought. It's not embedded. In XLF, well, I'm down to the point where as a bear, and I have been bearish on this market, this is where I would be telling clients, take money off the table. 
Why? You're not, you're oversold, you're not embedded, you're at the first challenge of the lower Bollinger Band, and when you did that before, the same type of event happened. Stayed there for just a short while and came back up from there. In the industrial sector, I still see this as bearish. Lower highs, lower lows, and what's the enemy of the industrial sector? High interest rates. So that is something you have to do a lot of thinking about. Now to negate the thinking, you gotta get all the way back over here, over 126.06 on the current pattern, the market playing right here, I wouldn't be surprised if the bears start taking some positions. In Freeport, McMoran, still bullish as can be. Tonight in my research, uh, the written research, I put it out twice a day for my, my traders, I write about this, and I write about not Freeport, but Chile, and the copper that's coming out of there, and showing how it's increased. Yeah, you're getting some increases in production, but overall, it's still not where it should be, and the demand is outstripping the supply, and it'll get worse if China can lift itself out of the dilemma that it's got. And you know, China's trying so hard to come out of this, we'll see if they're able to do it. But they consume 50% of the world's uh, copper. So if they pick up momentum, that's a very good sign for copper. What you don't wanna see taken out are two things. Number one, to me, the first and most important is not to lose the red line under 79. That reading is 85, it's bullish. On the pullbacks, just like you had yesterday, I think the pros are buying, and they're looking for 52.24. You lose some of the bullishness if you take out yesterday's low of 49.59, but more important to me is the momentum of the market than price. In RSPD, again, first challenge of the Bollinger Band. Out, past two days, you went right there, oversold, so long, let somebody else wanna own it, the, the high, probability that it'll just keep going down isn't with the market unless it embeds. And the same thing I'm gonna say is true of XHB, the home builders. Yes, they are getting beat up. Yes, interest rates are high. We went today and saw that uh, Freddie Mac set the 30-year mortgage conventional at 6.88%, not seven, but the market's used to these numbers. And if you're going to your home builder, the first thing you say is, listen, if I'm gonna get a mortgage, you gotta help me, How, what can we do? And they have the tools to do that. They don't just call up the bank, give them a lower rate. Do you have to work out on the house purchase, how you pay down the mortgage? They work with you on that. Where are your tax uh, advantages, if any? They'll work with you, I'm not a tax guy. In XLE, lower highs, lower lows, still bullish. Why is it still bullish? Because you got the embedded reading. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a correction in a market that's overall bullish. We haven't yet seen that Iran has done anything to attack Israel. I personally, my opinion, it will not be a direct attack by Iran on Israel. It'll be through proxies. That is the way that they can accomplish their end goal and they keep themselves out of direct confrontation. They can say whatever they wanna say, but the missiles won't be coming from Iran itself, and they don't have to get involved. And I think that Russia, Germany, the United States, everybody in some manner doesn't want to see Iran go head to head with Israel. It creates a huge conflict. You could have World War III. You don't want to see that develop. In GLD, you can see how the markets are just drifting here sideways now. They're taking off to the upside. And I wrote in my newsletter this morning, I said, folks, I'm getting people that are calling, they, they wanna get in. I said, then just go in. That's what I said at noon today. I said, play it this way. You're out if you lose the embedded reading and close under 79, and you're looking for the first move here up to the 221.59 in the futures. I still have an account that could go to $2,700 an ounce when we look at the Lin Group price counts. That's a big number that from here's quite a few, you know, it's almost $3,000 plus an ounce. So we do see that there's momentum in the market, same in the silver market, but that's the only way. And the reason is you're over the Bollinger Band tops on the weekly charts, you're not on these. This is the Gorilla Glue trade. The Gorilla Glue trade happens when the market hits a Bollinger Band and just locks in on it. What it does is it's merciless. 
it doesn't let the shorts out and it just keeps grinding higher until they're crying uncle and they want to come out of the markets. And that's pretty much what you have. In the copper market, it's not the Gorilla Glue. It's a market that hit the Bollinger Band, backs away, then hits it and backs away. Not the same type of strength that you have in gold and silver. In TLT, this is your first big move under the lower Bollinger Band and you're not embedded. I can hear you saying, Ira would say, got to cover short positions. Yeah. Could it go lower? Yeah. All right. But the high probability trade is 95% of the time the market's going to get back into that black line area. If you want to sell, sell the bounce again in the market. M maybe make it in bed. Sorry that we got a bad quote there in UUP. And as you can see in FXE, higher high, lower low. What do we have? I think that today the European Central Bank told you in plain English, the next move's going to be likely a cut starting in June. You may not get successive cuts, but the pressure is built for it. All the data has to do is, as it is, stay this way, drop a little bit, give them reason, and they're going. So that's one of your banks. Now we'll see about the Bank of England and others where they want to join in. You know, I talk about all this, and as I told you, I was going to set up my new course. Well, I've done it. So the new course is now ready for you to look at. I cover swing lines. I wanted to do it sideways this way. Moving averages, stochastics, Bollinger Bands, window envelopes. And it's all done in a way that makes it pretty easy for you to work with. In the course, I talk about my theories of the market. And then I teach. I start off with PowerPoints. And then we bring in real charts. I used my morning subscriber videos over and over. There's 45 chapters, a little over four and a half hours of videos. You're going to learn how to create the swing line, the theory behind it. What is it? Moving averages, the different ones I use. You and these videos right here on YouTube only see a few of what we use. I explain the differences also in the course of exponential weighted averages and simple moving. Slow stochastics, my version. I explain how I work with them. And then I lead you into in my enhanced Bollinger Band course with it as well. And that ties in with the Bollinger Bands, which as you know, it's, I, I really believe in these in a major fashion. And then another profit taking tool because you don't always hit a Bollinger Band, but you will get up and down to window envelopes. And unlike standard deviations that so many people use, you'll hear Rick Santoli talk about it on CNBC. There's just a number of people that understand these. Um, I work it a little bit different. If the concept is the same, but I tie it into my swing lines for peaks and valleys. And I find that works way better because it takes current momentum in the market into play. So you put that together, you get the videos, you get included in the course, the charting software, the ones that you're seeing here or our QT, either one of them will work with this. You then get access to all my research and you're going to get a 10% discount. In addition, in addition, the goal here is for you to learn. The goal here is for you to have a game plan that you can look at and build on. Your education doesn't stop with me. It keeps going. But I'm going to give you a way that if you watch me all the time on these videos and you like what you see, I can teach you how to do it. So you go to irapstein.com under the word education. Go to the charting course, and when you go to buy it, you'll see the 10% discount will be right there for you to see what you're getting. This discount's for a limited time. It's the inaugural of a whole, all of these chapters are brand new. So I've really done the course from top to bottom. First time I've done it in just shy of a decade. So it's really up to date now. You have yourself a good day. Remember, irapstein.com education, or you can click up here. It'll take you there as well. You have a good one.